mechs, my friends. Big stompy mechs. It might be hard to imagine in our swamplands of $120 battle passes and Hollywood-level bloat, but AAA gaming absolutely existed in simpler times. Older gamers might remember the Metal Gear Solids and Final Fantasy VII's when flashy cinematics went mainstream, but I would argue AAA could even be measured on just how often a top game is, I guess you could say, re-released. And it's not a new phenomenon. MechWarrior 2 was everywhere in the late 90s, both on store shelves and PC hard drives. It was part of that last best hurrah for MS-DOS, the old world, before Windows 95 and 3D acceleration would take over PC gaming and the OG PlayStation went worldwide. Out were crunchy resolutions and sprites, in were high-def 3D at slick frame rates, if you had the rig for it. It was such a milestone in gaming that Mech 2 received over 35 individual disc pressings. And while this was partly because of the rapidly changing technology of the time, it wouldn't have happened if the underlying game wasn't incredibly fun. MechWarrior 2 gave you two campaigns to go stomping around the battlefield, blowing up enemies with lasers, missiles, and cannons. The PC market was inundated with plenty of slow military sims and first-person shooters, but MechWarrior was a perfect fit right in the middle. It was high action, but in 80-ton mechs, just as it should be. Bringing weapons to bear on an enemy is simple enough, but heat and weapons management is the name of the game here. Fire everything and you'll overheat and shut down, so you need trigger discipline and good grouping to come out on top. Energy weapons tax your heat sinks but are unlimited, while missiles and cannons are cooler but limited by ammo. Hit detection can be flaky, but damage modeling is implemented and you can use it to your advantage. Battle mechs carry primaries in their arms, so if those lasers and PPCs are chewing you up, you can take them off at the shoulder, while leg shots will stop enemies in their tracks, which is great if you're at a disadvantage. Most mechs can aim off-center, and if not, there's always jump jets, so you can strafe and circle strafe to keep from enemy fire. Just know that all of this goes for the enemy as well. Facing down a heavy while keeping stragglers off your tail and trying not to melt down is what Mech Warrior is all about. As for the license and story, yeah, this is FOSS's Battletech universe. Great for content, though not so much for getting these back on the market. Now my Battletech lore goes about as deep as Warhammer, which is to say, filthy casual. But I do know Mech 2 represents the refusal war. Rather than casting you as a scrappy mercenary working for the inner sphere, here you're part of the genetically enhanced outcasts, the clans, and they want Earth back. Clan Wolf sees themselves as the protectors or wardens of humanity, while Jade Falcon are the conquering crusaders. Well, I know where I'm starting. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Honestly though, you don't need to know any of this if you're just looking for fun mecha action, but the game offers tons of official backstory in the archives if you're interested. For the missions themselves, Mech 2 usually has you attacking or defending key targets while blowing up enemy mechs, and occasionally inspecting units before blowing them up, along with enemy mechs. Early missions usually have you outclassing the enemy, which is great for learning the ropes, but by endgame you'll be outmanned and outgunned, so you'll need strategy, teammates, and perhaps a few dirty tricks to get by. Which brings us to the other key element of Mech Warrior 2, the Mech Lab. In between planet hopping, you're free to refit the 15 available battle mechs to your liking. There's plenty of presets, but real pros will probably want to improve them, up to the tonnage limit. Later games would limit the lab and force you to play more by the rules of actual Battletech designs, but here in 2, it's a blank slate, and getting that perfect build is absolutely addicting. Just know that if things ever get too tough, there's always the machine gun build. Presentation-wise, MechWarrior 2 was iconic for its time. Most PC games of the era would mix sprites and 3D to keep the frame rate up, but Mech 2 focused hard on a full 3D environment, and offered it at what were then unprecedented resolutions. The mech designs were all standouts, making the most of a limited poly budget, and had some basic textures, though the landscapes were mostly flat shaded. Cockpits added to the immersion and that sense of lumbering across the battlefield, while HUD details like armor and the picture-in-picture picture could be customized. The real trick, though, was wireframe mode. This was great for seeing in tough conditions, and more importantly, it doubled as the world's easiest frame rate hack if things started chugging. 
Look, what you call potato PCs, we would have begged for back in the 90s. Music was equally noteworthy. MechWarrior 2 was one of the first games to fully implement CD audio. It's kind of hard to nail down. It's both symphonic and electronic, but whatever the genre, it is the sound of MechWarrior. It's tribal, it's futuristic, it's powerful. If you enjoy G. Michael Jarre or maybe Yan Hammer, definitely give this soundtrack a listen. So, all of this added up to an amazing game. As I said, Mech 2 was one of those last best DOS games before Windows. But to keep things relevant, Activision would release it, and no I'm not kidding, in over 35 revisions updated for hardware and software. The good news is, the original MechWarrior 2 can pretty much be summed up into five main versions. The bad news is, they're all pretty quirky to get running, and it's not likely to get much better. The licensing was a tangled web of corporate ownership, so if you're hoping for a modern update on Steam or GOG, that might not be anytime soon. So let's look at the versions and the simplest, maybe not the definitive, but the simplest way to run them. The original, the DOS version, is Mech 2 in its purest form. Simple but high-res 3D, all the music, and relatively few bugs. This version would later be updated to be Windows 95 native, but those would limit the resolution to 640x480. The iconic presentation and compatibility of DOSBox pretty much makes the original the fan favorite of the bunch. It's Mech 2 as it was imagined, and is easy to get running, especially if you use a repack. The review then does not advocate piracy, only preservation always be wary of shitty downloads. Just be sure to limit the emulation speed to keep it under 60 frames per second. Mech 2 would forever suffer from glitches if the frame rate was too fast. Here it keeps your jump jets from recharging, and can make your LRMs blow up in your face. I'm sure it's only a glitch. The original also has the longest soundtrack. Since CD audio takes up a ton of space, any additional game data they added over the years would cut down the OST. 1996 saw 3D acceleration go mainstream, with cards like the Diamond Monster, Matrox Mystique, and ATI Rage all jockeying for dominance. To sweeten the deal, manufacturers often offered pack-in games tailored for that accelerator's APIs, and MechWarrior 2 was usually one of them. Whatever the differences in tech though, the underlying versions shared the same assets, with rolling skies, crunchy ground, and updated mech models. Otherwise, it's pretty similar to the original, making this, well, well, another fan favorite, actually my favorite. Now, Windows 95 and 98 games can be notoriously difficult to run on modern OS's, but thankfully a user on Vogons has created a pretty solid Mech 2 installer for Windows 10 and 11. Mount your disk image and the script should install the necessary tweaks to run the game, limit the frame rate, even improve the draw distance. If this doesn't work, your next best bet would probably be PCM to emulate an older Windows PC environment. Just be sure to add Voodoo Graphics as this supports 800x600. Next up is the Battle Pack version, which included the updates added to MechWarrior 2 Mercenaries. It was a nice idea updating the textures, user interface, and gameplay to give a unified experience across all three games. Unfortunately, Activision didn't give Battle Pack the care and attention it deserved, and it looked and played pretty lackluster, especially compared to the 3D accelerated version. Performance is clunky, heat sinks and jump jets can break depending on the frame rate, weapon balances off, and somehow they managed to make the hit detection even more flaky than before. It's also very difficult to run. Now you might be able to play it using MechVM, an older MechWarrior install shell. Unfortunately, MechVM only really works up through Windows 7, and even then you might get locked out of the Mech Lab. As of right now, the only fail-safe way to run Battle Pack is with a period-correct setup, either emulated in PCM or an actual older computer. Battle Pack had some potential, but laziness on Activision's part and the difficulty running it makes this one an outlier. The final PC port was Titanium Edition, part of the Titanium Trilogy, and this was a bit of a sad story. The dev team wanted to make the definitive edition of MechWarrior 2 with unified Direct3D support, but personnel were constantly reassigned to Activision's many, many other projects, and the result was pretty cobbled together. Bugs were prevalent, including the frame rate and overpowered weapons, though now in many cases you actually couldn't overheat. Might sound nice, but it does kind of break the balance and difficulty of the entire game. 
Background textures don't line up, fog is hit or miss, and the overall look just isn't pleasant with too many browns and grays. Over the years though, bug fixes and the ability to push it to modern resolutions has made Titanium slightly more appreciated. This works with Mina's installer, and viewed at 4K with a near 60fps frame rate, it does have its appeal. Just know the soundtrack is chopped down and reordered, and this is still a pretty messy version of the game. Lastly, we have the console ports for PS1 and Saturn. And while these certainly aren't the definitive way to play Mech Warrior, they are curiosities in their own right. I've always been fascinated by how developers brought big, complex games like Wing Commander 3 to consoles. Usually they would automate certain interactions and speed up the time to kill. And yeah, that's present here, but they also reworked the campaigns to focus on immediate action. Maps function more like arenas now, with objectives and enemies directly in front of you from the moment the game loads. I mean, the missions are all there, including some extras, but anytime navigating is pretty much removed. Movement, fire rate, cooling, and lock-on are hugely sped up, and while enemies fall faster as well, there are a lot more of them. Power-ups are scattered throughout the missions to give you stat boosts and health and ammo recharges, but they're not spammed like in Mech Assault. There's no mech lab, but you can group your own weapons before deploying. The only real annoyances are the jump jets and hit detection. Jets no longer let you stray for a slide, which is more accurate, but it seems like every other enemy has them. You'll spend half your time on the back foot trying to nail a bunch of assault mechs flying over you. And what little navigation there is can be a chore, as it's way too easy to get stuck on scenery. On the plus side though, this is a nice looking version of the game, especially upscaled. Mechs, scenery, and skyboxes are all textured, giving Arcade Edition a look similar to the 3D accelerated PC version, which is always nice. Animations are simplified, but weapons and explosions are improved. Now on actual hardware, Arcade Edition would probably be a write-off, but thanks to the ease of modern emulation, any superfans out there might enjoy seeing Mech 2 in a different form, and the 16 additional missions that come with it. Each clan has an additional 8 missions or 2 mini-campaigns, so if you want to complete your Mech 2 bucket list, there's never been an easier time. I've been enjoying some flight-style mecha games recently, and yeah, they're cool, but nothing quite matches that sense of weight and power as the big, stompy ones. Modern games like Mech 5 and Armored Core 5 have kept the genre going, but to someone growing up in the 90s, Mech 2 will always be the granddaddy. It wasn't the first, and it certainly wasn't the only game of its kind, but I'd say it really was the one to master the template. The gameplay style of big, walking tanks. You weren't dashing around instantly, but you also didn't need a checklist just to start the engines. It was an action all its own, and anytime you have big robots with lasers, well that's automatically cool. What about you though? What are your favorite mech games? Thank you so much for watching, feel free to leave your comments down below, and would you be my next subscriber? Most of all, be sure to keep going, because you are worth it. Call this a glitch?